Welcome to the sewing lab. The first thing you need to do is get comfortable with the sewing machine. So let's get started. Depending on the model that you have, the location of things might vary, but they all work the same. Generally all sewing machines are created equal. Look it up, it's in the constitution. Okay, not really. Step 1. Setting up your machine. First, you're going to make sure your machine is securely plugged in. Gently unroll the cord from the pedal and place it on the ground. Warning, the pedal is fragile. Be nice to it. Switch on the power. This is generally on the right side of the machine. Step 2. Now that you have the machine plugged in and turned on, there are a few things that you need to do. Your professor will show you how to thread the machine in detail. Make sure the foot is away from the pedal while doing so. Once the machine is threaded, it's time to sew. Step 3. Begin by placing fabric below the presser foot. Make sure it's only projects that the sewing machine can handle. Make sure your fingers, hair, and face are not in the way or it will hurt. A lot. Release the presser foot by the little lever in the back. It should come down and hold your fabric. This must happen unless you want to cause bigger issues that you probably don't want to deal with. Step 4. Be careful not to throw over any pins, zippers, or buttons. You may break the needle. Replacing the needle is easy, but again, if you do it wrong, there will be problems. While holding on to the needle with one hand, begin to twist the little knob on the side. Allow the needle to slip out. Remember, to keep holding onto this needle so it does not drop into the machine below. Place the needle to the side and put a new needle in. This is done in reverse order. However, make sure that the needle is facing in the correct direction. Do not force the needle in. Make sure you put the needle in a sharps box, not a trash can. Voila! You are finished and are ready to keep sewing. Step 5. Cleaning up. When you're finished sewing, clip your threads and turn your machine off. Use a lint brush to clean out the bobbin area. Finally, wrap the pedal up and return it to the sewing case. Bonus round. If you hear a loud or strange noise, stop sewing and reach out to your professor. Next stop, sergers. Sergers are like an overcomplicated sewing machine. There are usually four threads overlocking the edge of a fabric to prevent fraying. When using the serger, make sure you don't try to use it without further instructions from your professor. It's important to make sure the knife and needles are in proper order before using. Step 1. Similar to the sewing machine, when first using the serger, unravel the pedal and put it flat on the ground. Make sure your fingers, face, hair, and loose clothing is away from the needles and moving parts. Again, it would hurt if anything got caught. Just be careful. Turn the machine on by the switch on the right side next to the hand wheel. Step 2. To the right of the presser foot is the knife. This cuts your fabric as you are sewing. However, there may be times when you don't want to use it. Open the front compartment and press on the disc to rotate the knife out of the way. If you would like to use the knife, set it up in reverse order. Once you have the machine set up how you would like it, begin sewing with the presser foot down. Sew at a speed you can control without pulling or tugging the fabric with both hands on your material. Keep your eyes on the prize and always make sure you don't surge through your project that isn't meant to be searched. Step four, once you are finished surging, make sure you clip your threads using the thread cutter in the back of the machine and turn the machine off. Now that you are somewhat familiar with the machines we use, let's look at the tools we use in the lab. Irons and steamers are lined up against the walls. If you plug it in, you unplug it. It can be a serious burn or fire hazard if neglected. Use your common sense about fire safety. If the steamer is running out of water, fill it up with distilled water. Hopefully you know the rule to not run with scissors. Have you heard the rules on how you should pass scissors? When passing scissors, make sure the blades are closed and make sure that the blades are in your hand with the handles out. Make sure that the blades and handles remain closed when not being used. There are three types of scissors used with sewing fabric shears, paper scissors, and thread clippers. Make sure you only use thread clippers for thread. 
paper, scissors for patterns, and fabric scissors for all of your fabric. Rotary blades are basically fancy round scissors. They should always be covered when you are not using them and only use them on a self-healing mat. Only use them to cut fabric, not paper patterns. When you are finished cutting, make sure to return the rotary blades to the storage tray. Make sure that the cutting mats are stored correctly. In the Family Life Lab, that means they are stored vertically between either the tables in room 311 or between tables and walls in room 309. Pins and needles are essential in any sewing. Needles and pins are easy to lose and hard to keep track of. To help with this, there are five rules to live by. Make sure as you are finished using pins and needles, you return them to a pin cushion or a box. Don't run over them with a sewing machine or serger. If they break, don't throw them into the garbage. Always use a sharps container. Don't walk around the lab without shoes. This is not your living room. Always make sure that you pick up any fallen pins or needles off of the floor. These tools are the more destructive tools of the lab. Hammers and mallets are used to put in grommets, eyelets, jean buttons, etc. When you are using them, always watch where you are swinging. Warning! Do not, I repeat, do not use them on the melamine counters in the Family Life sewing labs. Only the wooden ones. Finally, we will end this video with first aid and emergency situations. Because we are using powerful machines, accidents can happen if you are not careful. If an emergency occurs, notify your instructor immediately. Whether you ran through your finger with a machine or you poke yourself with a needle or seam ripper. The rule is, if there is blood, apply pressure and stay calm. If the fire alarm goes off, stop what you are doing, turn off the iron or machine you are working on, and calmly head toward the nearest exit. If you need to reach something high, use a stool or ladder. If it has wheels or moves freely, don't attempt to use it. There is a first aid kit in the Family Life Lab 311 in drawer number 36. Well, you are now finished with the obligatory safety video. Congratulations! After you pass the safety quiz, you can then enter the exciting and creative world of the sewing labs. Good luck in your semester, and I hope you enjoy your sewing class.